Well, hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, where we'll be putting uh, a spotlight on one of our brand new Capsum Inbox versions that we developed with Professor Josh Dwight of the City University of Seattle, uh, on Capsum Inbox Operations Management. My name is Matthew Shell. I'm Capsum's Market Development Manager, where I work with all of our authors to create these custom simulations. And of course, I'm joined today by my colleague, Akil Forbes, our Business Development Manager, as well as Josh Dwight. How are you both doing today? I'm doing well, thank you. I'm Fantastic. doing well as well. Excellent. So as long as everybody can see my screen, okay, we'll go ahead and get started. And what we'll cover today is a few different topics related to the operations management version. First, we'll provide a general overview of all of the different skills that we'll be assessing, the scenario, as well as the role that the student will play during that exercise. And then from there, we'll hand it off to Akil, who gives a very top level 30,000 foot view of what the Capstone Inbox experience looks like from the participant, as well as from the administrative perspective. From there, we'll go ahead and switch gears again. And I'd like to put a focus on Professor Josh White, his time at City University of Seattle, as well as a lot of his corporate expertise in, around instructional design that led him to create this particular solution. We'll then recap the scenario, ask some key questions to Josh, go through a couple of the developmental resources that we provide with this version, and then we'll close out with a great Q&A session. So if at any point you have any questions or comments, please feel free to enter them in the chat, and we'll be happy to address those at the end of today's session. So with that, Let's go ahead and get started. So first and foremost, what exactly is Capsum Inbox Operations Management? Well, this is one of our newest suite of micro simulation tools that we created back in 2019. In fact, we released it right at the end of that year. And in this particular scenario, the student is going to be taking the role of a process improvement manager at an established sensor manufacturer. And for any of you out there that are using our current project group-based Capsum simulations, this is probably already gonna be recognizable to you because this goes alongside those simulations as a great complementary individualized experience. Now, in terms of the format for this particular version, it is a one sitting 60 minute experience that the students will go through. And we see a completion time on average of roughly 30 to 45 minutes, I would say. Now, in terms of the company profile, we actually set this directly in that sensor industry with a company called Sensor Inc. And really the main themes of this version are going to focus really on a cross-departmental investigation where you're trying to identify some determined root cause of some key operational issues while following the DMAIC process, which we'll describe shortly. Now, in terms of the skills evaluated, we do actually frame this within the DMAIC process. So we do everything from assess and measure how students can go about defining a problem, measuring the problem and classifying it, determining that root cause analysis, being able to appraise different solutions to improve operations at this particular company. And then finally, how is it actually implemented? How can they control these new solutions effectively? And the overarching scenario is that Sensors Inc. is really aspiring to be the global leader in the sensor industry, but it's gonna require quite some significant changes on the operational front in order to do that, to increase both the manufacturing output and the sales of their key sensor products. And as this new process improvement manager, it's gonna be up to the student to be able to apply their different problem solving and process improvement ideas, such as the DMAIC principles, in order to assist Sensors Inc. with really identifying those key issues and recommending enhancements to improve that process going forward. So now that we've done a quick outline of what the operations management version specifically entails, now what we can do is I can pass it to Akil, who will give us a great 30,000 foot view of what Caption Inbox is like holistically, and then we'll walk through that participant experience. Akil? All right, thank you so much, Matt. Um, so taking a step back, what is the platform itself? And um, how, how is it used? How does it look and feel to the participants and the instructors? Um, it is a, a self-driven uh, simulated assessment, um, as we covered, putting the students in the role of a professional and uh, assessing particular skills based on how they respond to scenarios that pop up in their inbox. Um, and um, it's been used in many ways. Um, so this can be used as a quick homework assignment, um, 45 minutes, as we mentioned before, or it can also be used in replacement of a case study, maybe a, as a live case study or as a, a pre and post fashion. But what does that actual um, in platform look like? So we're gonna switch over into a shell of our general management version, just to give an example of what the students will be going through. Um, so what we're looking at here is a, a dashboard. This is uh, the initial screen that they'll see when they begin this experience. And first thing they're gonna do is click on that take assessment button 
uh, the green take assessment button and be taken to a welcome uh, page where uh, again they're going to get a quick high level overview of what's to come but their experience is going to follow that ribbon at the top of the screen of going through a welcome a quick self-assessment getting some more context on their role and, and a quick rehearsal and then entering into the inbox itself so again on the welcome page we're going to watch this quick video about a minute and a half and then move on to the self-assessment uh, which are going to assess the skills that were listed before for this particular version. So as I mentioned, we uh, are looking at an example of our general management version. So we're looking at the mostly soft skills here, um, organizing, leading, uh, problem solving, communicating, and initiating. And what the students are going to do very quickly is move that scale, uh, move that ball across this zero to 100 scale based on their um, perceived ability in that particular skill. So quick self-assessment, moving on um, from here, they would move on to gaining more context of their role. What position am I playing in this particular um, uh, assessment? What is the company um, that I'm working for? Do I have uh, direct reports? Who do I report to? What are the company values? Um, what is the company uh, service or uh, actually selling here? Um, they'll take some time to digest this context, content uh, before jumping into a rehearsal or jumping into the actual inbox. So um, definitely encourage your students to take some time to um, take that in. And then moving on to a quick rehearsal. What does that da actual dashboard look like? How am I going to respond to these particular emails? Um, so it's going to start off with a welcome email just generally addressing the students on what's to come. And then uh, they will uh, can click on the second email and actually learn how am I going to respond to these particular scenarios. Um, so very quick, two emails. And then from there, they're going to jump into the actual inbox itself, which will um, have about um, 45 emails. Um, and also, um, what we'll notice here is a timer at the top of this experience. This timer is going to start from uh, 60 minutes and countdown. Uh, and this is really just as an added pressure for the students uh, to be aware of that all professionals uh, sort of uh, experience of I have these many tasks to accomplish in this amount of time. Uh, so there's no uh, penalty if they go over 60 minutes and no real reward if they finish this experience in, in 15 minutes, let's say. Uh, but they'll have that um, and then they'll also have emails that again they're going to read and respond to and they'll have um, other options of um, addressing the file uh, drive over to the left if they need to reference some information possibly a company uh, org chart to say okay who's actually emailing me is this a direct report is this somebody that i report to uh, so helping them prioritize how to respond and who they respond to uh, but again, they're just going to go ahead and take in that information and pick the re best response and move on to the next um, email. Um, while they're doing this, they're also going to receive chats um, from colleagues. Some of these chats will be uh, pertinent questions as we're looking at here. And other uh, chats from colleagues will serve as uh, maybe a distraction of um, how was your weekend or we went up to my cabin, here are some pictures. I'm trying to replicate a day in the life of a professional. So again, um, it's for the students to go ahead and prioritize how they respond and who they respond to. Uh, once they go ahead and respond to all of these messages, they can click uh, exit inbox and immediately uh, receive feedback um, on their performance. And the feedback is gonna start broad and, and drill down to very specific. So what we're looking at here is a uh, percentile. Um, and then, so really judging them against everybody else who has gone through the same experience at their same level and how they performed. Uh, below that, we're gonna see a development uh, index as well as a, a self-awareness score. So judging their um, uh, self-assessment against their actual performance uh, to see how self-aware they are. But most importantly, they will be able to see the skill gap uh, report reminding them where they put themselves uh, in the self-assessment and then letting them know where the inbox assesses them um, in this particular skill based on their responses. In some cases, this will be a self-esteem boost. Um, I put myself at 10 in terms of organizing where the inbox says, hey, you're at a 50. That's great. 
In other um, cases, there's going to be a negative skill gap in most cases. There's going to be a negative skill gap here of, hey, you, you thought you were a, a 60 in terms of leading. Actually, you're at a 20. Um, so students will take some time, digest this information and feedback. And uh, many assessments will leave students with this. Um, you know, you're stronger in this area. Uh, you have some room for improvement in these other areas. You know, have fun with that information. Uh, where we try to take it a step further and walk them through an individual development plan, which uh, again, we'll start out with a, a high level video, but then give students uh, developmental tactics they can pick and choose from to build out a SMART goal for themselves based on the development of the skills that they choose. So at the bottom of the page, they will see the skills listed out, not only in skill scores, but development needs. Um, so if I were to click on a particular skill, I would see our definition of that skill and a list of developmental tactics I can pick and choose from to exercise or improve upon that skill. And what we're looking at here is a, a fleshed out individual development plan that has a timeline, the skills that I choose to implement. Um, and this is really um, self-leadership or leadership development um, that I can walk away with as a student and say, hey, this is my uh, development plan for myself. This is downloadable as a PDF uh, for each student to walk away with um, as a self-realized goal or action plan um, for them. So that is the student experience. From here, we're going to switch over to the uh, professor instructor experience. What does that dashboard look like and what does that entail? So uh, what we're immediately looking at in the center is the overall class average, which you'll have access to, as well as the average skill scores broken down um, to the right. And below that, you'll be able to see your class roster and roster scores, um, overall performance, self-awareness score, um, completion time, how much time did they actually spend in this experience, and, and whether or not they completed a individual development plan. Um, those uh, metrics can be uh, downloaded and exported to a CSV file for uh, further analysis if needed. Um, and then you can also break it down into the skill scores if you wanted to uh, have that uh, as well, um, also downloadable and exportable uh, to a CSV file. Uh, so that, that is the experience for the um, instructors and the participants as well. So you'll also be outfitted with uh, the ability to um, preloaded uh, PowerPoint um, presentation to introduce this experience and also debrief this experience with your students as well, which is uh, important to know. But uh, all in all, that is a high level view of what the platform itself um, looks and feels like. Excellent. So thank well, thank you very much for that detailed walkthrough, Akil. Very much appreciate it. Oh, very welcome. And, uh, and now that we've detailed a little bit of the upfront information on the operations management specific version, and then also having gone through that walkthrough with Keel, now what we could do is switch gears and talk a little bit about our featured author for this month. So I'm happy to introduce you all to Professor Josh Dwight, uh, City University of Seattle, where he's been an associate faculty for over five years there now. And in fact, his current focus is teaching course, a variety of different courses on operations, IT foundations, as well as business strategies. But more specifically, he teaches both with the MBA and the BSM curriculums, their operations manager courses there directly. And as a Capsum user, we were very happy to work with Josh back in 2019. He was actually one of the first authors we connected with to create these Capsum inbox versions. Now, in addition to his experience at City University of Seattle, he's also a program manager at the Merchant Risk Council. And this was additionally intriguing to us at Capsum because Professor Dwight has some extensive experience to both developing and managing e-learning and webinar programs, everything from online courses to webinars to accredit and for everything from accreditation as well. And with extensive experience in instructional design, he's developed on topics such as chargebacks, payments, as well as fraud courses, courses for the MRC. And additionally, Josh came to the table with some fantastic uh, corporate experience as well, where he served as the e-commerce program managing lead at Costco Wholesale. He was an information systems auditor at Washington Federal Savings, even an industrial engineering method analyst at Boeing uh, commercial airplanes. And finally, of course, he also served as a systems accountant at the United States Department of Justice. So quite the resume there from Josh, and it was a pleasure to work with him. So with that, what we can do now is let's go ahead and do a quick recap again of the scenario and skills assessed, 
And then we'll go ahead and turn it over to Josh if he has any initial thoughts on his experience working with Capsum or developing this solution. And we'll start off with some key questions that we can ask. So first and foremost, again, the scenario, what are we looking at here with operations management? So again, the student is gonna take the role of that process improvement manager at that manufacturing company developing sensors. And really this is just a race against the clock to be able to determine root cause with a couple of different issues that are happening in sequence at this, op at this plant. And what's interesting about this is that some are gonna lead you on to the true cause. And then we also have some detractors added in there as well, or some red herrings, if you will. And overall, what we really want to achieve here is to let's give students a practical way to apply their working knowledge of operational concepts to see if they can effectively impact and improve the standard operational processes at this given company. And again, the skills are going to focus really around the DMAIC principles, the DMAIC outline from problem definition to problem classification, root cause analysis, appraising solutions, and then controlling those solutions as they're implemented. So with that, Happy to turn it over to Josh. Josh, would you have any initial thoughts that you'd like to share on, on the version that you've created before we start with some questions? Um, sure, so uh, thank you for uh, asking me to join this panel. Uh, it was an absolute delight to uh, work on this, uh, this effort uh, a couple of years ago. Um, at the time, and just to give everybody a little bit of backstory, um, I was looking for ways that were more interactive, more fun for our students. Uh, again, I'm one of those professors that if I'm if I'm bored uh, just talking about a subject, um, then I need to do something to make it uh, a, a lot better. And again, not saying that operations management isn't fun. I love operations management, but let's be honest, there are some kind of dry areas. I mean, and that's a, that's across any any subject. So. But I just wanted a more uh, interactive way to get our students engaged. Um, I would created a lot of in-course uh, video case studies that kind of worked through it, but I wanted something a little bit more interactive. So when um, Capsum came calling, uh, you know, I jumped at the opportunity to work on uh, Inbox because, again, I thought it would it does well to give the student um, a day in the life of you know, a process, not only a process improvement manager, but uh, generally any sort of person in any sort of corporate setting or nonprofit setting or um, uh, non-governmental setting. So basically operations management can be used across the board, healthcare, government, doesn't matter. And so that's what's so great about creating something like this is uh, operations management is so versatile in that aspect. but I did want to just give a day in the life. This is something you typically see in your email box. You know, you've got a dozen things going on at the same time and some of them are worth your time and some of them aren't worth your time. And being able to put the student in that position to uh, make those decisions and, and really kind of get a feel of, are they really prepared to go out into the world and identify real problems? And if so, are they able to go through some sort of methodology to really analyze what's going on and then come up with appropriate solutions. So that's kind of the, the big ball of uh, uh, information that I wanted to share. Oh, well, no, that, that was excellent, Josh. Really appreciate you, you walking us through why you decided to create the solution. And if I could drill further on one particular point that you made, mm -hmm. you, you had mentioned that, you know, really this is to kind of breathe life into a lot of the operational concepts that you teach in your courses, mm -hmm. and more specifically kind of around that experiential learning component. Would you say that that was kind of the overall goal or need for the simulation or maybe one of them by chance? I think, yeah, that was definitely one of the uh, opportunities that I saw uh, when uh, working on this and when I was looking for something. Uh, to add value to my students because, again, I, I feel like you need to get them more engaged at different levels. And <clears throat> this, I think, uh, this process uh, that we use for Capsule Inbox, you can find in every single operations management book. So, again, the, the MAIC process uh, is very well known. It's well utilized um, in the industry. Um, so again, there's a good crossover between being useful within not only the academic setting, but also, um, again, it is very widely used in uh, corporate America as well. Excellent. 
And and by extension of that, Josh, is there if you could maybe define like one key benefit from both the student perspective and the professor perspective to, for the audience to take away? What would you say is the key benefit for both of those different groups and something like this? Yeah. So again, as I mentioned, for the student, it's really trying to evaluate your skill set in identifying problems, right? So uh, I can't think of an article off the top of my head, but uh, I know over the years that's been one of the biggest uh, uh, things that have come out in in the press. Is you know, corporate America can't find students that have the really good problem solving skills or being able to think outside of um, the organizational's uh, mindset or within the organizational's mindset. And so again, I really want to focus on that area because again, I think that's generally what most of us do in our day-to-day -day jobs in corporate America. There's a nice fancy job description that, you know, of all the things you're supposed to do, but really in your day-to-day -day work, you're really trying to put out fires, different problems are coming up and you're trying to implement projects, you're trying to do all these other things, but problems happen regardless of if you're working on a project, if you're working on operations or anything in between. So from this, <clears throat> excuse me, from the student aspect, that's what I really wanted them to, again, work on these skills. What are some of the tools that we can use? Again, we use the DMAIC um, uh, methodology, but within that, there's an opportunity to use all kinds of root cause analysis tools. So uh, five whys, um, which is widely used at Boeing. Um, there's uh, the fishbone or the Ishida, uh, Ishikawa diagram uh, that uh, lots of people love and know. And so again, there's lots of tool sets that will fit within this um, particular uh, methodology or framework that can be easily applied to everything. And I think giving students that framework and those tools will help them succeed in whatever position they get in whichever organization. On the flip side, um, as, in, as educators, again, that's kind of what you want to do. You want to give them the knowledge, the skills, the abilities to be able to um, do well, not only in the academic setting, but also once they leave the academic setting and go into real life. Um, so, and then again, this has a really good way to give um, educators a, a different tool to use with their um, students as well. Again, I like lecturing, but again, not all the students like to learn that particular way. Some people want to get more hands on and that interactivity, I think, provides a different outlet for students and for educators alike. So, and then again, you can build off this, as I said, this is kind of like an interactive case study. So again, there's lots of questions and I think we include those questions uh, with this package. You have to remind me, uh, Matt, um, of things that you can do after actually doing the simulation. So again, not everything's just encapsulated within the simulation itself, but there's areas that you can go and explore. You can ask questions. What other things can uh, can the company do going forward? Um, mm -hmm. or, you know, what are the, tools, technologies, people that maybe need to be added for this particular scenario. So uh, yeah. that's what I really wanted to convey on on that uh, question. No, oh, 100%. And to, and to Josh's point, uh, you know, what really differentiate, there's, I would say there's two primary differentiators between operations management and box and some of our other selections is number one, it's incredibly accessible. So, I mean, if it's, if this is kind of like the first introduction of students to an operations, uh, you know, related materials or related concepts, this is great for them, but also for the more seasoned individuals that just need more of a experiential exercise to really try to jump that knowing doing gap between the foundational knowledge we lay in the course and the actual practical experience that they'll need on the job. And then as a second component, uh, what differentiate, differentiates this version, I would say, is that you know Josh was fantastic at really wrapping up this experience towards the end, where we asked the student, you know, like you have multiple multi-answer responses, which specific initiatives and working within a budget would you choose to try to improve the operations of this sensor company the most effectively? So we get a lot of really dynamic responses from that, and we're able to give some great feedback on that. Now, as far as post experience, we'll get to that in just a second, where we'll cover both the developmental tactics that Josh was able to create, as well as a great post uh, I'm sorry, post simulation discussion guide to facilitate that kind of group uh, discussion right after the simulation is completed. Uh, but as a final question to you, Josh, um, in terms of what courses would the microsim be best suited for? Of course, 
operations management would be kind of the, the best fit. But, you know, the beauty of Inbox is that it's pretty versatile and that it can fit into other types of courses as well. Based on your experience, do you feel like there's any other courses that this might be a good fit for to kind of give that kind of intro to operations? Yeah, I mean, any any intro to management course, any introduction to um, information systems, I feel like you could uh, dabble in a little bit. Uh, typically at my organization, we use it for, uh, as uh, Matt showed you, um, both operations management courses, but again, we can also use it in our strategic uh, management courses as well. So again, it can be applied at uh, several different areas. Again, just initial um, information systems, strategy, general management, and then obviously operations management. Absolutely. And if I could add one thing to, to Josh's comments there as well, you know, because of its versatility in a variety of courses, we very commonly see not just operations management inbox, but other versions as well, utilizing the pre and post test format. So being able to have them go through it and say that intro to business style course or business fundamentals, for, for example, and then by the time they go through their operations course, have them go through the same thing again at the end of the curriculum or even at the bookends of a course even. And what we're able to provide is an empirical longitudinal uh, information on their skill development between that first and second implementation. So a lot of great value to students there too, because they can actually see the net change, positive or negative, that they were able to, to uh, achieve with these skills between those implementations. But no, this was fantastic, Josh. Really appreciate your insight here into how you went ahead and created it. Now what we can do is we can focus a little bit on those post-simulation resources because this is something we've really tried to expand upon with our with our CAPS and Inbox versions. And, and Josh has some of the best materials we have available at this time with, with each of our authored versions. In that we provide the students with substantial developmental tactics based in research, based on practical examples, providing you know a lot of great visual aids and you know everything down to general tips and tricks on how to improve improve the learning and application of the skills that we're assessing in this version from start to finish. And by an extension of that, what we asked Josh to do, and he did a fantastic job of doing this, was just to create a couple different discussion topics because, you know, the students are going to come away from this experience with that feedback report, with that IDP where they can improve their skills, but how about talking about it right after class? So we have a great, we have a great kind of discussion guide that kind of walks you through what are the key outcomes in this simulation? What are the key decisions that the students are making? That way you have context as a educator. And then we give you those teaching notes there to kind of expand upon, okay, well, what kind of questions could I ask and how can I kind of frame it in a different light to really facilitate that great discussion? And these are all resources that are available instantly within your administrative portal, should you like to pilot this or test it out yourself during the month of May. And then, you know, in addition to the great feedback we've gotten on, on this particular version from a lot of, the, of our current clients, we've also got some validation from the industry as well, not just with operations, but CAPS and Minbox generally. In fact, I'm very happy to say that over the last, you know, year and a half, we've gotten a lot of great feedback from a lot of, you know, larger industry representatives like the EdTech Awards, for instance, as well as the Brandon Hall Group Awards. So in 2020, we, we were able to set uh, CAPS and Minbox as a trendsetter for a product or service in the workforce as a professional skill solution. And in fact, just two weeks ago, we were picked again for a winner for 2021 for the best corporate training solution. So kind of, you know, as Josh was describing, kind of helping bridge that gap between what they can learn in academia before they go on to the workforce. And then also we got some great feedback from Brandon Hall Group as well for the best advance in gaming or simulation technology. And the actual platform that Josh utilized to create this simulation, we were acknowledged for as well for the best advance in content authoring technology. So if any of you out there have an idea how to create a, an email-based simulation, feel free to let us know. We'd be happy to talk to you about bringing that to fruition. But in closing, before we go to the Q&A, uh, well, actually, that's a good point to, to interject here. If you do have any questions that you'd like to ask uh, anyone on the panel, including uh, Professor Dwight, please feel free to submit those in the questions section now, and we can get to those in just a few moments. But while we're waiting for those questions to come in, I'd like to just provide some general information if you're interested in learning more, trying it yourself, or piloting it with your students. So as you can see on the right side of the screen, feel free to contact either myself, Akil, or Professor Dwight with any questions you have on the version. We'd be happy to, to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you. And on the left side of the screen, we'd like to give you the opportunity to either connect with Akil directly, and he can kind of take a more in-depth walkthrough of this version specifically and address any key questions you have. And then also, when we provide this deck along with the recording, we, you'll have a link here where you can get instant demo access for you to create an account and see the student experience firsthand.
And then as with all of the pilot pass spotlights we're doing throughout 2021, if you want to pilot this with any of your students or if you have any colleagues that you'd like to recommend this to, we are more than happy to provide free access to this tool. That way you and your colleagues can evaluate it, gather student feedback and find out if it's a good fit for your course. So, and of course, at the bottom of the page too, we have a, uh, the pilot pass landing page that will give you a little bit more context on this initiative we've been running through this year as we focus on a different version through each calendar month during 2021. So what we'll do now is I'll go ahead and give it about 10, 15 seconds to see if we can generate any questions. And then we'll go ahead and uh, get, put, pass those Josh's way and then we'll wrap up today's session. Go ahead and take a look. Okay, so we got we have our first question coming in and I, I'd be happy to feel this one uh, from Elena. Uh, is the simulation ADA compliant? So that's an excellent question, Elena. In general, the CAPS Minbox platform is ADA compliant, uh, WCAG 2.0 third-party verified for ADA compliancy. However, at this time, we only have a couple of our versions that meet that criteria, but we are going through the process of making sure every single one of these versions, including the one that we're going through today, will be ADA compliant. This is something we're trying to wrap up within the next couple of months here. So uh, some versions, yes, others, shortly. Any other questions we could field at this time? Ah, kind of more of a general question for you, uh, Josh. I know you kind of hit on this a little bit here. Um, how do I use this in my class in terms of, I'm assuming this is more towards the actual implementation itself, like a use case. Um, yeah, no, uh, great question. I used it in my courses as an in-class uh, activity or exercise. Um, and then uh, like, and used uh, again, those discussion questions at the end to basically fill out the um the course duration so um i liked to give my students the opportunity i explained it i let them take it during the class and then we talked about it afterwards and how they felt um, about trying to solve issues and things of that nature so um you can use it within your classroom that was my preference when uh, creating this and kind of where i geared it towards but that doesn't stop you from you know using it online or and having an online discussion uh, forum around it. I typically um, have just used it in my in-person classes while we're in class and then we can you know, banter ideas back and forth um, after and before and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And I can provide some more general context on the way we've seen other versions of Inbox used too, including operations management. Um, from the very kind of fun, engaging exercise or more of a knowledge check of key concepts, we've seen it also implemented as essentially a live case study kind of removing the pen and paper and really putting them right in the scenario. No longer are we asking you, what would you do from a third party perspective? What would you do right in those shoes? But we've also seen, depending on the learning objectives of your course or your curriculum, uh, if the skills that we're assessing are fairly co-aligned with those learning objectives, I've had some professors that have actually used this for accreditation or assurance of learning as well. And I actually have some professors that look at look at the simulations we create on the platform for even for research purposes to be able to be provided with de-identified data on students or you know whomever they'd like to measure as decision making processes. Uh, we have another question coming in, uh, Josh. I could speak to this more from a platform level, but I'd love to get your opinion on this based on the the content that you've created for this version. Mm -hmm. Would this version be okay for non-native English speaking students? More so specifically, I would think probably more towards like the terminology or any jargon that we're using in that exercise. Um, I tried to, again, stay away from uh, too many uh, colloquialisms that, uh, uh, or analogies that would throw off some foreign students. I myself um, have predominantly had a lot of uh, foreign students in my uh, courses, and so um, they, they seemed uh, fine with, the, with the, uh, the language. I did try to make it as plain spoken as possible just uh, to recognize that fact. Again, there might be some uh, some humor that uh, one of the uh, NPCs throws your way that you, you might have a little bit of difficulty, and uh, I think Matt knows what I'm talking about. Uh, so I think there's some like bad dad jokes in there that uh, <laughs> uh, may may be a little bit uh, may be not I be identifiable to some uh, foreign students, but I think for the most uh, most part the uh, the platform is yeah used for yeah. basically anybody. So 
Yeah. Josh, would it be kind of a, a, a good assumption to say like, you know, the, the core content is going to be very, very relatable. Only some of these tangential aspects might be a little bit. Right, uh, right. Yeah. Uh, our minor, our minor character in there who just has a, a bad sense of humor. Exactly. He's got a little bit of a bone to pick, let's say. Excellent. Um, one, one final question I see, or I'd like to give everybody a chance to, to, to ask any final questions they have, but I, I have a question for you, Josh. If you mm -hmm. wanted everybody that attended today's webinar or anybody watching this video in the future to take away one thing from Capsum Inbox Operations Management, what would you say it would be? The one thing, um, I'd, I'd say use it. Again, I, I love experimental learning. Again, if you're trying to incorporate uh, something into your uh, classroom again besides the normal uh, online forums, besides online videos, besides uh, just the lectures. Again, I would highly recommend uh, using a business simulation uh, like Capsum Inbox or uh, you know the the bigger product as well because again I feel like <clears throat> excuse me that just gives such a great hands-on uh, experience for our learners and again that's ultimately what it comes down to is providing a great value to our students especially nowadays absolutely well everybody we'd like to thank you for joining us for today's webinar spotlight on the may 2021 pilot pass for capsum inbox uh, operations management uh, of course feel free to connect with us at any time we'll follow up with you all shortly with the recording as well as a pdf version of today's deck and we'd be happy to take the conversations from there and answer any questions that you have. I'd also like to thank Akil Forbes, our business development manager, for highlighting the overall inbox experience. And a very special thanks to Professor Drosh Dwight for being able to take us through his creation. So thank you very much, Josh. Appreciate it. Well, thank you, Matt. Excellent. Well, thank you, everybody, and have a great day. Have a great one, everybody.